Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Tonight at 11, a day of mourning and a community coming together. We take you to the vigil to remember the people killed this week during a mass shooting in Raleigh. And we bring you conversations we had with the family of the alleged shooter and of one of the victims. Plus, a suspected serial killer in California is in jail. We will tell you how police tracked down the man they say is responsible for killing six people in separate attacks. Good evening, I'm Chris Lovingood and for Julian Grace. And we wanted to make sure we started off by showing these faces front and present. These are the faces of the victims killed during Thursday night's mass shooting in Raleigh. Throughout the day, hundreds of people visited the Headingham neighborhood to pay their respects and mourn the people who died. WREL's Leslie Moreno joins us live at one of the memorials left there. And Leslie, it has been an emotional day. I can clearly see that memorial has been growing. Chris, a much calmer scene just two days after the mass shooting. We are right by one of the entrances to the Headingham neighborhood. You can see that memorial here. We've seen people stop by all afternoon. Just so many families impacted by this horrible tragedy. The vigil was full of emotions, tears, and so many questions. The Lord bless you and keep a day many of us will never forget. There are five families that woke up this morning without their loved ones. In a matter of minutes, the neighborhood was flooded with law enforcement, armored vehicles, and deputies with weapons. They locked us down and they told us to stay in our homes. And as you can imagine, it was scary and traumatic. The community was at a standstill for hours after suspected shooter 15 year old Austin Thompson shot and killed five people, including an off duty police officer. We, we were shocked by the news. You know, you hear about stories like this happening all the time, but this one happened right in our own backyard, you know. Devante Godfrey was out of town when he heard the news. He rushed back home where nothing was the same. Coming back and seeing how it's affected all of the neighbors in the community, it's been heartbreaking, but I'm also encouraging to see people pulling together and comforting each other too. Today, he and dozens of others gathered to mourn the loss of their friends and neighbors. Today, we all come here with broken hearts. Like many, we are devastated, we're shaken, we're stunned, we're mourning. So much has happened and you know, I've heard so many people saying, what can we do? And that's the thing. What can we do? A chance to come together, uplift each other, and say goodbye. Check on your neighbors. Check on your families. Let people know that you love them. And, you know, don't ever overlook what people are going through. Counselors and rapid response teams were also on site available for families. And if you drive around the neighborhood, you'll see many of these memorials reminding everyone of all those impacted by Thursday's events. As, and Leslie, before you go, was there anything aside from what you just reported on that really just sat with you today? Maybe something that was said? Yeah, so many powerful moments. Just seeing the community come together, show each other love and support, share stories. A lot of people we spoke with, uh, some of them didn't even know the victims, but them just coming uh, to share love and support with everyone. It was very clear that this community is strong and resilient and they will get through this. People just clearly coming together to show that support together. Leslie Moreno reporting live in Raleigh. Thank you, Leslie. And new tonight, we are hearing from the fiance of one of the victims, Mary Marshall. The two were supposed to be married in a few weeks. And NBC's Priscilla Thompson spoke with Marshall's fiance about the moment he arrived home and police were there. He started asking about tattoos that Mary has. She's got one here with three birds and some words, something about flying or sky, and the detective goes, sky above us. In your handwriting. <laughs> and I remember, I said, yes, how the hell did you know that? And we knew right there. We knew. That. We knew. <laughs> we knew she was gone. <laughs> A moment, definitely, that will sit with that man for the rest of his life. And if you want to help the families of the people killed, we have links to multiple GoFundMe pages set up for the families of the victims. And you can find them online at WRAL.com.
Now, Raleigh police have set up a memorial to remember Officer Gabriel Torres, who was killed during the shooting. These are pictures shared with us by the department showing a patrol car covered with a black drape over it. You can see that the memorial is at the Raleigh Police Department's downtown district station on West Cabarrus Street. The headline with the words, five of my neighbors died and nothing will happen, that can be enough to give many people pause. But Triangle Business Journal staff writer Evan Hoopfer told me that's how he felt after the mass shooting Thursday and why he wrote an article with his frustrations and his concerns. I hope that my family doesn't die in a mass shooting. Evan Hoopfer lives in the Headingham neighborhood where five people were gunned down Thursday. The same neighborhood where he takes walks with his wife Mackenzie and his infant son Charlie. Such a paradox because you have absolutely no control of it, over it as a parent, but at the same time, it's so incredibly preventable. Evan said during the shooting, his editor texted him to lock his doors, warning him of the shooter nearby. Evan just couldn't get his mind off the deadly shooting the next day. I still felt terrible um, that five of my neighbors had died in such a tragic um, and violent way. So he did what writers do. He wrote. With just shy of 800 words, he typed out his anger because as a husband and now a father, he fears the kind of world Charlie will live in. Um, he's going to have that threat the rest of his life and the rest of his childhood when he should be, you know, uh, concerned about, you know, girls or boys or, you know, pimples and stuff like that. He's going to be concerned about mass shootings. And that's so why. And that's what terrifies me is that complacency with the fact that um, dying by mass shooting in America is no longer extraordinary. That nonstop loop of a deadly mass shooting, mourning the victims, the news coverage, and then it all repeats. So if the headline, five of my neighbors died and nothing will change, sounds depressing, well, Evan says it is. You should be depressed. And if you go to WREL.com right now, you can find a link to Evan Hooper's article that you can read. Now, we expect to get some answers in this mass shooting in a preliminary report from Raleigh police that's often referred to as the five-day report. And within this case, we expect that report to be released this coming Thursday. That will be five full business days since the shooting. New Tonight, WRL News has heard directly from family members of suspected mass shooter Austin Thompson and shooting victim James Thompson. Now, what I'm about to share was gathered from text messages and very brief phone call conversations I exchanged with them. A day after the shooting, I talked to a family member of the suspected shooter. I asked the woman on the phone if she was the mother of the suspected shooter and one of the victims. She wouldn't answer that question and then hung up. But before she did, she told me they were headed home when they heard about the shooting. First through a Facebook group for the Headingham neighborhood and then a neighbor who reached out. I texted with that woman later and she said she'd been at the hospital and they'd heard about the jogger who was shot dead and said, quote, it's a nightmare. She also said, quote, because this is a criminal case, you will need to go through our lawyer. However, she was unable to provide contact information. I called another family member, a man, and asked him clearly, was one of his sons a victim killed and one of his sons the shooting suspect? To both questions, he replied, that's what I've been told. Now, when I followed up later to get contact information for a lawyer, he told me, quote, I have no comment. I also asked the woman I called if they had anything they wanted to say to the shooting victim's families and if doctors believed their son, the suspected shooter, Austin Thompson, would survive. The response I received said, quote, depends what lawyers suggest we do. Of course we want to say something to the victim's families. Again, to be clear, all of that was from text and phone call conversations, and we will keep trying to learn who their lawyer is to ask more questions, including how the suspected shooter got access to the firearm used. Now, we know this story will have a lasting impact on our community. Our news team continues to work with sources to help all of us piece together this tragedy. Our extended coverage continues on WRAL.com. That is where you can find our previous reports about the victims, a timeline of the shooting, and a map of the investigation. We also show you ways to support this community no matter where you live. Authorities say a suspected serial killer in California is in jail tonight, and we will talk about how police managed to find the man they believe is responsible. Plus, coming up after your news at 11 o'clock, SNL returns for an all-new episode, and this week, Megan Thee Stallion is hosting and performing. Anthony? And we're going to see a warm end to the weekend with high temperatures tomorrow in the low 80s. But when do we see a big cool down headed our way? I'll break down that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. And as we head into the break, here's another look at your winning Powerball numbers.